Hello, everyone. Just peachy today. Um, in between the main episodes of our shenanigans with Husbando series, I feel like I want to do just stuff on the side, just the more informative, talky things. So, the first one that I have come up with is about Tired and Falls in Love, which I have just recently finished because I apparently wasn't on that bandwagon. And now I am. So I have now read all of it and I'm going to give opinions and stuff. So uh, trigger warning, I rage a little bit over this manga. So if you really like it, sorry in advance, uh, two spoilers because I can't properly explain why it bothers me without spoiling it. <laughs> so if it's going to fuck up your whole, no, I wanted to read that thing, then then just don't listen to this, because I'm just going to go off about it. Um, before I start rambling, I have some, some informative stuff, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Koisaru Bokun is Tyrant Falls in Love in English. It was written by Takanaga Hinako. It was localized by June, or June, or however you say it. And um, we have the first nine volumes out of ten. There are ten volumes in Japan. Uh, as far as I know, it's still ongoing. And it was released in 2004. It's actually a sequel, which I didn't know this, to Challengers, which was released in 97 by same mangaka. Which ha is in the same universe, which I'll explain later. Um, it also has drama CDs and an OVA primetime adaptation, which was released in 2010. Oh, so much stuff. Okay, so all the people I'm going to be talking about. I think I'm just going to hit on them as I, as I go along. Um, and Koisa Robokun, there's... Senpai, who is commonly always called Senpai. He, like, rarely gets called his name. So when I was looking up, like, notes, because I'm awful with names, so when I do stuff like this, I have to have everything written down so that I, like, don't fuck everything up. I was like, God damn, what is his name? I've just read freaking three bajillion chapters of this, and I still don't remember his name. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, senpai's name is Soichi Tatsumi, or Tatsumi Soichi. I wrote them in my notes American style, because that's how the wiki was, and that bothers me for some reason. Whatever. Anyway, words. Um, he is a, if I remember correctly, a biologist? Like an agricultural science type thing? And he has a kohai, someone underneath him in, in grade, who is Morinaga Tetsuhiro. And he's perfect. <laughs> and um, he's also flaming gay. And Senpai, which is Soichi, is very, 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 very homophobic. Like, stupid homophobic. Like, can't understand why they exist, homophobic. <laughs> and he has, Soichi, has a brother, a little brother, who is gay, and is with his significant other, and they have since moved to America together to, to be together. And Soichi just, just hates it and cannot tolerate it. But he's he's kind of acceptable in the fact that he isn't... I don't know how to explain this right. He... He just wants his little brother to be happy. So he's like, oh, you're, you're, you're gay. I don't fucking like that. I think your boyfriend's a piece of shit and I hate him for taking you away from me kind of thing. But it, he's... But he's like, I, I just want you to be happy. Like, I'm not gonna stop you. But this is what I feel. And I can kind of respect that, 
But as I got through the manga, I just started to want to punch him more and more and more and more and more. And I will get to that. Um, side note, the little brother who's, who's gay, who's Senpai's little brother, blah, 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 blah. Senpai's little brother who's gay, is the main character in Challengers, which is the 97 release that I said earlier. I didn't even know that existed. I didn't even know that Tyron falls in love with the sequel. I thought it was kind of weird when I was reading it. It seemed like, like the way that they talked about characters, they were, like they were talking about things that I should have already known. So that was like, hmm, it sounds, so, sounds like there are other series in this. And what do you fucking know? There are. And I'm reading Challengers now, and so far I really, really like it. It's dated because it's 97, which I feel dated myself saying that 97 is dated, but it is. Um, God, that's almost, that's almost like 20 years ago. Fuck! I don't want to think about that. Anyway, so the drawing style, it's the same mangaka, but the drawing style is significantly different. I'll put up comparisons on the screen, but... It's significantly different to the point that it kind of bothers you at first, but you get over it. Because the story is really good. Um, I've read the first volume of Challengers, and hopefully I will get through the rest of it this week. Because I really like it, and I want to read all of it so that I can do comparisons. But I have read all of, of Tyrant Falls in Love, and... Bah, Jesus. So, with all of that said... God. Um, Morinaga, which is what he's more commonly called, the Kohai, the, the, the gay one who's super obsessed with senpai, who's super homophobic. Morinaga is amazing. <laughs> and, it, and it makes me so sad that he gets treated the way that he gets treated by senpai. I'm just going to call him Senpai because nobody calls him Soichi except for, like, siblings and you you just forget that he has a name. (laughs) But anyway, um, and like I said, there's going to be spoilers, so I can't explain my hatred (laughs) without spoiling the whole damn series. So, Morinaga has a really, really effed up past. He's always been gay. He's always known that he was gay. And he fell in love with his older brother's best friend. Insert love triangle. <laughs> um, his name was Misaki, Misaki which was the, the guy he fell in love with. His brother's name is Kunihiro. Yes, Kunihiro. <sighs> and... They end up dating, but they date in secret. Because, one, Morinaga's parents are extremely homophobic. And two, Misaki didn't want anyone to know. So, they dated for an extremely long time without anyone knowing. And then they got caught. (laughs) Uh, Kunihiro catches them in the act in their house and goes fucking batshit and come to find out Misaki's family is is more like I don't know how to explain it kind of like a more higher up family like everyone knows everybody else because they lived in a vaguely sort of kind of small town so everybody knew and so rumors started spreading and Misaki told Morinaga to his face when all this happened I'm in love with your brother. I've been using you. So Misaki was just using Morinaga to to, to put a band-aid over the fact that he was in love with Kunihiro and couldn't have him. And he told that to Morinaga's face. <laughs> Um, among other things, and it was a very awful, horrible breakup. Uh, like I said, rumors start to go around the whole fucking town that they're gay. And due to all of the drama and and family splitting apart and people getting super, super upset about all of this, Misaki tries to kill himself. Luckily, he does not succeed. And Morinaga is just dumbfounded that all of this bullshit could happen 
within a matter of days. Morinaga's family basically disowns him and was like, "You no, you cannot be that way in our house. And they offer to pay for his college so that he can leave and, and, and never be seen again. Like, we'll pay for your schooling so long as it's not here. Go somewhere else and then we're done with you. Like, that's all we owe you. And his older brother is just as mad, and he's like, how, how could you? Uh, I don't understand, yada, 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 yada. And it was a super dickhead about it. Misaki is nowhere to be seen. He just sort of disappears after the suicide attempt. <clears throat> so, Morinaga gets his shit together. Essentially is kicked out of his town. No, like, no one wants him around anymore. And he manages to pass the entrance exam for the college that Senpai goes to. <laughs> and lo and behold, somehow or another during the course of time ends up falling in love with Soichi, which is Senpai. <sighs> and poor baby Morinaga... <laughs> of course, has to pick the one that is so anti-gay, it's stupid, and every, every five fucking seconds, he has to go on a tirade about how his brother's gay and he just doesn't know what the fuck to do, with, do about it. And Senpai learns that gay marriage has been passed and freaks the fuck out and, and calls Tomoe, which is his little brother, and is like, holy shit, no, don't, don't you be thinking about that, you can't do that, and then what do you fucking know, Kurokawa, which is Tomoe's boyfriend that he ran away to the States with, is like, you know, I've, I've always really kind of wanted to do this, and what do you know, they get married. And it's adorable. And Soichi loses his mind. <laughs> and during this whole thing, Morinaga is just suffering. But he doesn't show it. He never shows it. <laughs> and... One thing leads to another, and he somehow or another confesses. I don't remember what, like, when he says that he told him. I can't remember if it's before the, the gay marriage thing or if it was after. I don't know, but he confessed to Senpai. Senpai knows. Senpai never said anything and just never replied. Thought the whole thing was a joke, essentially. And... Due to Senpai losing his damn mind about the whole gay marriage thing, they go out drinking together because they're friends and they chill. And Soichi gets super drunk and they run out of beer. And <laughs> he goes, Morinaga, go get more beer because he's really bitchy and fucking needy. <laughs> and Morinaga, who is just fucking in love with him for whatever damn reason, is just like, okay, yeah, whatever, I'll run out and get some more. Well, Morinaga had a bottle of, I have no fucking clue, some kind of aphrodisiac shit that he had hidden in a cabinet that one of his friends had forced upon him and was like, oh, I feel so sorry for you that you have this unrequited love. Well, th this will make anyone get in bed with you kind of thing. And he goes, no, God, I don't want to use that. And so he hides it. So this thing is hidden in a cabinet. And drunk senpai is looking around his house, and he fucking finds it. And stupid asshole freaking drinks the whole damn thing. And Morinaga comes back with all the stuff and goes, oh my god, what the fuck have you done? And for the most part, it looks like nothing had happened. And he goes, oh, thank god, maybe it was just a joke. So they go to sleep after they're done drinking and all that stuff. And then Senpai wakes up with a raging heart on. <laughs> and one le thing leads to another. And somehow or another, Morinaga convinces him to just let him do the thing. And it's kind of rapey, but not super rapey. Like, I didn't... Uh, it's like, I don't know if I want to consider it date rape or not, because... Senpai is not exactly like turning him away. He didn't really. I don't know. It's complicated. It's probably rape. I'm extremely jaded because I've just I've read things so much worse. But 
blah, 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 they end up doing it. Senpai loses his damn mind in the morning, like, oh my god, what the fuck have you done? And <sighs> makes a big freaking deal about it. And one thing leads to another. A couple chapters later, they still have this complicated relationship where they're not really dating, but they're not really not dating. <laughs> and it's weird. And this is where we get to the... Peachy loses her damn mind over this manga bit. So after all of that date rapey stuff had happened, they just sort of flip-flop. And Morinaga would be like, well, how do you feel about me? Because we keep doing the thing, because they, they will do the thing and, like, have sex and stuff. And it's it's mildly rapey, like, it's kind of forced, because Morinaga's the one who just sort of breaks and just wants to do it. And Senpai's just kind of like, yeah, fuck it, and then ends up letting him do it anyway. And he's like, well, we, we've been doing this thing for so long, what, what are we? And during one chapter, he... Because this goes on forever. <laughs> like, during one particular chapter, he uses the word sex friend, or the Japanese word for sex friend. And Senpai goes ballistic, and he's like, I am not your sex friend. And he's like, well, if we're not dating, and you're not my sex friend, what are we? And he continues to not have a word for it, and not explain it, and still get jealous any time Morinaga is, is, is even remotely around anyone else or talks about being with anyone else or whatever. Uh, but it's not like, like, to the, to the point that he's, like, super mega jealous because he'll be, like, around people at, like, a Gokan or, or, like, out drinking or whatever. And, because there's another chapter where he's surrounded in women, Morinaga is. And Soichi is surrounded by women because women find them attractive. And later, Morinaga's like, well, how come I can get jealous over you, but you never get jealous over me? And he's like, well, I don't have to worry about you. You're gay. And it, it's really awkward. <laughs> and then he's like, no, please, God, just be jealous. Shit. And... Come to find out, there are things that he is jealous about, to the point of obsession, and it gets a little ridiculous. And I hope all of this is making sense, because I'm just kind of ranting my feels. But for like, let's see, there's ten volumes. So I'd say probably about six of them, six out of the ten, is literally them just going back and forth. And Senpai being obnoxious. And you learn more about Morinaga's past. And how it hurts him so deeply that he's just not accepted. That his brother won't accept him. Misaki ran away and essentially didn't accept him in the end. His parents definitely don't accept him. And he was ostracized from his entire fucking hometown. With the exception of a couple friends. He's got it fucking hard. And every five seconds, it feels like Senpai or Soichi reminds him that he's gay and that Soichi is never going to be like him. Like, I'm not some fucking homo, like that kind of bullshit language. And every time he talks like that, I just want to strangle him. <laughs> and, 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 God damn it. Like, I want to like him so much. And I do, to an extent. Because Soichi isn't completely bad. He does have redeeming factors. He has a really good family. He treats his siblings really well. And for the most part, takes care of Morinaga. But... Dear fucking God, like, it it's so disheartening to watch their relationship because Morinaga goes through so much and holds so much in and never says a damn word about it. And then the one fucking second 
that he decides to be selfish and say something about himself. Soichi loses his damn mind. And is like, no, you can't do that. Yada, 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 yada. You fucking etchy homo motherfucker. And it's like, no. 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 You can't lead him on. And 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 want to have an emotional relationship with him yet like yet not and then not let him be around other people yet not and and it's oh it's just oh it's repulsive <laughs> it 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 triggered me real hard yet i kept reading it cuz i it's i feel for morinaga and he's a sweetie baby and he's so jaded when it comes to Soichi just being asshole to him and treating him like shit. And sometimes Soichi is really sweet and does cool things and is really great. Like when Misaki comes back, because Misaki does come back. Soichi just, just fucking loses it and is like, no you don't have the right because you abandoned him. You used him and you abandoned him. And he's like, he, he's like the only voice. And he does the same thing when um, Morinaga's brother comes back. And he just like beats these people up and is like, no, you can't you, you, you can't do this to him. You, you can't just show up and expect everything to be fucking fine. And it, it's so cool. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you fucking tell him. But then in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, how can you go off on them for treating Morinaga like shit? And then you go back and do the same fucking thing. Like, oh, God. Fuck. It's fucking annoying. But... Ah, dis <laughs> despite all of this, I read all of it. <laughs> and I do feel that Senpai has redeeming factors. And they make a good point in the manga, which kind of hit me a little weird <laughs> when they're like... I wish I had the quote. Like, it, it's so good. He's talking... Um, Morinaga is talking to his older brother because, spoiler alert, older brother has now realized that older brother has always been in love with Misaki and is trying to get Misaki back now that they know where Misaki is again. And so, Morinaga and uh, Kunihiro have have made up. and And they're talking about him essentially getting in a relationship with Misaki. And Morinaga gets triggered by the way that Kunihiro talks. And then Kunihiro's like, well, it's kind of like if I were to, were to tell you that you need to be in love with women. You're gay. You're never, you, you've never thought about it. You've never... You've never d visualized this before. It's it's a life that you n you never knew. Yet all of a sudden, there's this person who's a female, and you're super interested in them, but you don't know what to do about it, and you can't justify it because your whole life, you've been told that it's wrong, and and it just takes a while to adjust. But and Kunihiro's like, and I know that. And I know that I'm being ridiculous, but it's just going to take me time because it, it's like my whole life is doing a, a freaking 180. Like, it's just flipped completely upside down. And just the way that he explained it to Morinaga just sort of clicked. And then Morinaga's like, well, that, that does make sense. But to me, I feel that doesn't justify the language that Soichi uses all the time towards Morinaga. It's not fucking cool. Morinaga's been through some shit. You don't treat my baby like that. <laughs> like, it made me super sad. There's a couple scenes in the manga where I I was I was super happy with him, uh, Senpai, where like, um, 
<sighs> they're having a dinner with Senpai's dad, Tomoe, which is his little brother, Kurokawa, which is the little brother's boyfriend, uh, Isogai, which is the little brother's boyfriend's friend, <laughs> and then his younger sister, and the Morinaga's there, and they're all having dinner together. And little, bro- little brother's boyfriend has never met the dad. And it's actually not boyfriend. They're husband. They're married. Anyway, husband, whatever, has never met the dad. And the dad didn't know that they had gotten married yet. And so they're essentially coming out of the closet in front of their whole family. And there were a couple of the family that knew. But the dad didn't know. So he's introducing himself to the dad and going... I'm sorry that it took me this long, but I'm so-and-so, uh, we're already kind of married, but I'd really love it if I could have your blessing. And the dad goes, well, Tomoe, which is the, the little brother, are you happy? And then Tomoe's, well, yeah, like, super happy, like, it's just, everything's just great, and I'm just really, just content with the stuff that's happened, yada, yada, yada. And the dad goes, well, then you're, you're cool. Welcome to the family. And Morinaga has to leave the room. And he goes in the bathroom and just starts bawling. And he goes, I'll never have that. That's something I will never have. And... <sighs> and then Senpai follows him into the bathroom like, oh, shit, what's up? And Senpai doesn't say anything, and he just takes his face and wipes his tears away, and then realizes what he's realized what he's doing, and then backs away and leaves. And it's like you have it in you to be sympathetic towards his life, and 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 want to to help him, but at the same time you belittle his entire existence every day. And it just, I feel so conflicted. <laughs> it's like he does such cute things, and then he does such shit things. And it's like, God fucking fuck, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> but in a nutshell, that's what I wanted to ramble about. Um, I'm reading Challengers right now, which, like I said, is, is a little weird because it's a different drawing style. But I, I love when universes interconnect. Like in Junjo Romantica. Um, shit, another character that gave me similar feels that Senpai gave me was fucking Misaki from Junjo, actually. Because I'm fucking in love with Usami-san. <laughs> he's amazing. I know he gets a lot of shit, but he's amazing. He has a lot of problems, but he's amazing. No, uh, <laughs> there are things about Usagi that I don't like. He's way too stalkery. He doesn't let Misaki have his own fucking life sometimes. It pisses me off. But Misaki has a voice. And when you get further into the series, Usagi eventually figures out that I can't be like that. Like, I can't let you not have friends and not do this and not do that. Like, I may your, I may be your boyfriend, but, but I, I'm not, I'm not your, your parent. I can't. I can't keep you caged in this apartment kind of thing. And it it gets better. But Misaki, god damn it, Misaki, (laughs) was in denial for so long. And it was so frustrating when Usami's just like, please just tell me that you love me. And then Misaki's like, I can't. And he just wouldn't do it. And I'm like, oh, why? Like, like, that shit ruined me. Not as bad as Tyrant Falls in Love ruined me. I, I'm still upset that Suichi still hasn't really said that he, he loves him yet. I feel like they're more of a couple now. I won't ruin everything, but I feel like now, as of Volume 10, I feel like they're more of like a, like a solid couple. So, that's good. But, I... Oh, God. There's there's another thing when they go to a wedding reception together that Senpai is basically forced into going to. And 
he wants to introduce Senpai as his boyfriend. And it's the saddest fucking shit. And then, and he's like, oh, no, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. And, I'll, and it's like, dude, it's been years. Over the course of this manga, it has been at least, by that point in the manga, it had been at least a year since they had started doing stuff. At least. And, uh, god damn. God. Uh. And he throws a big fit. And... And then he throws a fit because the reception is gay, which I thought was funny, because he took him to a gay wedding reception. But, he just, God, God, it's just, it's just, be called homophobe falls in love, because it's literally what the damn bong is. And I get it, uh, uh, it's like it's trying to get me to be sympathetic towards certain things and I just can't be because I just get super triggered and I can't fucking do it and oh god Tsunade my usual little co-panelist type person on these absolutely loves Tyrant Falls in Love and I'm like oh god please no oh please no ah damn it I mean I'm not saying that I hate it I don't hate it clearly I don't hate it because I read all of it and now I'm reading the original, so clearly I don't completely hate it. Which, by the way, Senpai is in Challengers, which is the original series. So I guess I'll have more content to add there on all the bullshit that he does to his little brother. But it's just, I just hate the way he talks. And I just wanted to ramble about it because it made me sad. <laughs> but long story short, I would give it... Hmm... I'd give it four out of five stars. I'm going to knock it a star just because the character development is really slow. And I kind of want to punch Soichi sometimes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. But that's really all I had to say. Honestly, I just really wanted to ramble about it. There's a lot more to this series than I, than I thought. This is almost Ginger Romantica level of freaking adaptations and shit. It doesn't have near as many chapters. I wish it had a full anime instead of just OVAs. Because I feel like the OVAs don't give you enough. The OVAs only cover maybe one volume? Maybe two volumes? I feel like it's only one volume. I don't remember. But it, it's not enough. I, I feel like this would be a good candidate for an anime because it, it has so much plot and it's really good. I feel like that's what, what made up, like, made up for the, the shit that I had against Soichi. Made up with plot because the plot's really, really good. And the art style's really pretty. Challenger is, is special because it was, it was drawn in the 90s and it's not as crisp as Tyrant is. But I still like it so far. I've read uh, at least the first volume of challengers. That's really good. And I'll probably have it done in relatively near future. It's rare that I find a series that I haven't read. It's like I'm running out of stuff. <laughs> so when I figured out that there was content of Tyrant that I had never seen, I was like, oh shit, I gotta talk about this. But yeah, that's basically my review. Um, I'm probably gonna do these a little more often. When I find things that I haven't actually read before and can give a, a noob opinion about. Um, if you have comments or things to add, feel free. Comment them. Pretty please with sugar on top and ice cream cones and happiness and glitter and unicorns. That'd be great. That'd be really great. Um, hopefully my next episode with Sonata will be up sometime this week next week whenever I get done with it it's a lot <laughs> it's it, editing is hard <laughs> um currently all I have to work with is freaking windows movie maker I'm working on getting sony vegas so hopefully I can upgrade and we can have clearer pictures and cooler stuff and better audio we'll get there eventually but as of right now we're recording off of my cell phone and putting pictures in on Windows Movie Maker. So hopefully this works out. Um, tell me if you like this. Give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. And tune in for our next stuff. If I come up with something to ramble about before the Tsunade episode, I will post it. 
But yeah, I love all your faces. Thank you.